If you have ever noticed a frog very closely, you must have seen that the floor of the mouth goes up and down continuously. Even though their mouth is closed, the floor of the mouth goes up and down. Uh, it, it seems like they are chewing something, right? But from our previous video, we learned that frogs never chew their food. They only use their teeth to grasp the prey they catch, right? So what are they actually doing? They are breathing, breathing through their mouth. But uh, the mouth is closed, right? So how are they even breathing through their mouth? Well, frogs have the most amazing respiratory system. They can breathe through their mouth without even opening the mouth. They can also breathe through their skin and they have lungs just like us. And that's not it. They also have gills just like fishes. Amazing, right? Well, amphibians, amphibians, simply means dual dual life they can live both on land and in water and their life starts in water and the initial stage of the tadpole or the larval stage of frog looks more like fish and less like a frog right so in that stage they respire or breathe through gills exactly like fishes do and then as they transition to land, they develop all other means of uh, respiratory mechanisms. So in this video, let's have a quick overview of all different type of respiratory systems of frog. And we will begin with the dead pole or the larval stage of frog, okay? So as we just discussed, they have gills on their sides. So how do gills work? So let me draw them here outside. Let's say these are the gills or the openings, okay? And these gills are comb-like in structure and are highly vascularized. They have a very close network of blood capillaries around them. A lot of blood capillaries surround the gills. Now as the tadpole opens its mouth, water rushes in and gets out through the gills. Excess water gets out through the gills. So as water passes through this highly vascular, vascularized gills, what happens? The dissolved oxygen is taken into the blood and the excess carbon dioxide from the blood is sent out. And this exchange of gases could take place because uh, we know gases always moves from region of higher pressure to regions of lower pressure. That is why oxygen could move into the blood, carbon dioxide from the blood could move out into the water. So this dead pool, as they grow and develop into an adult frog, they lose a bunch of stuff like the tail and the gills, okay? They lose their gills and they develop other parts of the body like the limbs instead, okay? Now, even without gills, you must have seen frog happily surviving underwater. How are they able to do that? Well, that is possible because they can respire with the help of their skin. And you know what's even more interesting? They can respire with the help of their skin, not just, not just underwater, but also while on land. So why are we not able to respire with the help of our skin? Well, that's because our skin is dry and it has a layer of keratin on top keratin protein which makes our skin impermeable but when it comes to frog the skin is moist it is very thin okay and and it has a layer of mucus on top and again it is highly highly vascularized okay it has very good supply of blood network underneath the skin so the oxygen from the air dissolves first into the mucus lining or the wet surface on top of the skin and from there it gets into the blood okay and carbon dioxide from the blood moves out first into this mucus layer into the wet layer above the surface of the skin and then diffuses out into the environment that is how frogs can breathe with the help of their skin and this type of respiration is called cutaneous respiration okay now, another reason why this kind of respiration works for frog is because they don't need much energy. Uh, in our previous video, we learned that frogs are cold-blooded, right? They don't need to maintain their internal body temperature, which is not true in case of humans. We, we need to put in a lot of energy to maintain our own internal body temperature, right? 
and our energy demand is much higher than that of a frog. So as per the requirement of the frog, skin works just fine. The oxygen attained from its skin is, is, is sufficient for its survival. Especially during the months when they go into a phase of very less physical and physiological activity, uh, which is very popularly known as hibernation or estivation, during those days, their energy demand reduces even further. So cutaneous respiration becomes the perfect way to respire because it needs less energy and their oxygen demand is also very less at that time. Now moving ahead as we discussed frogs have two more options through which they can breathe or respire okay and uh, one such way is through their mouth the one we saw at the beginning of the video remember now to understand how this kind of uh, respiration works we need to look at its internal structure a little bit okay so here we have the nostrils an opening uh, to the outside just like we have ours okay then this is the buccal cavity this area here and then they have a pair of lungs just like we do okay now now try to recall how humans breathe we increase the volume of our lungs so that the pressure inside decreases air pressure inside decreases and the air from outside could rush in right the frog does the same we saw how the buccal cavity floor moves up and down, right? Like this. What are they actually doing? They are lowering the floor of the buccal cavity so that the volume inside increases, so that the air pressure inside will decrease. And that is when the air from outside will rush into the buccal cavity. Now guess the next step. What do you think? The air will be moved to the lungs, right? No. Do you see there is a closing here? This is the glottis. It stops the entry of air into the lungs. So where is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide happening in this case? What do you think? Well, here it is happening in the floor of the buccal cavity itself. The floor of the buccal cavity is very thin, is lined with mucus and is highly vascularized. Just how we discussed in case of skin of frogs. The oxygen could easily diffuse in and carbon dioxide diffuses out into the buccal cavity. The frog then lifts the floor of the buccal cavity and the air is rushed out through the nostrils. And this kind of respiration is called buccopharyngeal respiration. Interesting, right? Now, let's move on to the fourth way of respiration of frogs. That is through their lungs. Let's see how they do that. So, the first step the frogs do is to lower their buccal cavity floor this is number one so that the air pressure inside decreases and the air could rush in through the nostrils into the buccal cavity the next step is to close the nostrils so that air cannot rush out then the frog lifts the buccal cavity floor so now carefully look at the next step the frog lifts the buccal cavity floor look again it lifts the buccal cavity floor and the air rushes into the lungs. The glottis opens, the air rushes into the lungs. Now the lungs have alveoli which increases the surface area for absorption of oxygen but the lungs are not as well developed as in case of humans and uh, they also have fewer alveoli than we humans possess. And as you may already know, these alveoli are highly vascularized, they are very thin-walled and uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide can easily exchange through the walls of this alveoli and blood capillaries. Okay, now as the exchange of gases takes place, the next step is exhalation. So how do the frogs exhale now? They don't have a diaphragm like us. Well, uh, frogs have other muscles responsible for exhalation okay those muscles pushes the lungs so that the air pressure inside increases and the air could rush out into the buccal cavity the buccal cavity floor lowers air is filled here now the nostrils open so look carefully the glottis is closed now the only opening is the nostril now and when the buccal cavity floor will be raised the air will move out through the nostrils that is how they exhale and this was the respiration through their lungs which we also call the pulmonary respiration. 
So these were the four different types of respiration, four different mechanisms, one through gills in the tadpole stage, in the larval stage. Then we saw cutaneous respiration, that is respiration through skin in adult frog. Then we saw how buccopharyngeal respiration works. And then we looked at the pulmonary respiration in frogs. Now, the natural question would be, how does the frog decide? Which, which mode of respiration to opt for? Well, it depends upon the amount of energy the frog requires at the moment. Okay, The cutaneous respiration goes on all the time uh, when it is at rest, when it is hibernating, estivating. I mean, all the time the cutaneous respiration goes on. But uh, the buccopharyngeal respiration starts when the frog needs a little more energy. Okay, and then it shifts to pulmonary respiration when it needs the most energy, maybe when chased by a predator or when it is mating. So just like we change gears in our vehicle to increase the speed, these frogs change their mode of respiration to meet their energy need.